Good morning, Valenzuelano learners. Welcome to Valenzuela FB live streaming of Earth Science. I am Mr. Mark D. A. Valdivieso from Malintan National High School Senior High, your live stream teacher for today. We will be discussing energy and water resources. Before we start, I would like you to get your learning module, notebook, and ball pen for today's learning journey. Also, do not forget the following reminders. Find a quiet place free from noise and distraction. Use a functional gadget and a stable internet connection. Always be focused on the discussion and participate by placing your answer in the comment section. And lastly, and most important, be respectful at all times and be polite in giving your comments. To begin, here are the most essential learning competencies that we have to attain today. Explain how heat from inside the earth and from the flowing water is tapped as source of energy for human use. And identify the various water resources on earth. Let's begin our today's discussion using the cryptogram coding. Here are the mechanics. You are given a piece of text that is enciphered somehow. That is with most puzzles. Each letter is substituted with symbol and you need to work out which letter in the alphabet is being coded by the letters you are given. These are the codes with their corresponding letters. For the first word, type your answer in the comment section. Did you able to figure it out? What word is it? Correct! It's geothermal energy. How about this one? Can you figure it out? Correct! It's hydropower. These are the two important words that we are going to tackle today. Let's begin with geothermal energy. Geothermal energy or geothermal power is generated using steam produced by the heat emanating from the molten core of the earth. For us to know better about this type of energy, let's have this activity. We are going to identify the different parts of geothermal power plant. This is the basic diagram of the geothermal power plant. Below is the list of its parts, and you are going to place them in their proper places. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to do it. Are you ready? Go! Time's up! Let's now take a look at the answers. These are the basic parts of the power plant. This part is the production well, where groundwater enters through the pipe. Steam will be produced and makes the turbines turn. So the generator will operate to produce electricity. The steam goes to a condenser so that it will return into a liquid state and be cooled down on this cooling tower. When cooled, it will return to the underground or geothermal reservoir through the injection well, mixed to the groundwater there and the process will be repeated. Let's further talk about how geothermal power plant works. Number one, hot water is pumped from deep underground through a well under high pressure. When water reaches the surface, the pressure is dropped, which causes the water to turn into steam. The steam spins a turbine, which is connected to a generator that produces electricity. The steam cools off in a cooling tower and condenses back to the water. The cooled water is pumped back into the earth to begin the process again. 
Now, get your ball pen and paper and let's try to answer the following questions. Number one, what do you call the part of the earth where hot water or steam is located? Number two, what passes through the production well? Number three, what makes a turbine spin? Number four, what happens in a cooling station? Number five, what passes through an injection well? And number six, what happens to the water after it was pumped back below the surface? I am giving you at least one minute to answer the following. Are you done? Let's check if your answers are correct. In number one, the correct answer is geothermal reservoir. Number two, the answer is ground water. Number three, the correct answer is steam of hot ground water. Number four, the correct answer is cools down the hot ground water. Five, cooled ground water. Number six, the answer is it will be mixed again to the ground water. Were you able to get the correct answers? Good job! Now you have learned something about geothermal power. Let's talk about hydropower. Hydropower is derived from the energy of falling or fast-running water, which may be harnessed for useful purposes. Let's talk about the different types of hydropower facilities. Let's begin with the most common and the largest type of hydropower facility, the impoundment. This facility uses a dam to store river water in a reservoir. Water released from the reservoir flows through a turbine, spinning it, which in turn activates the generator to produce electricity. The water may be released either to meet changing electricity needs or to maintain constant reservoir level. For us to further understand, let us identify the basic parts of this facility. We have here the diagram of the impoundment facility. Using the terminologies above, kindly identify the parts of the facility and you have 30 seconds to answer. Let's begin! Okay, let's see if your answer is correct. These are the basic parts of impoundment. Dam stores the water. Penstock delivers the water from the dam towards the turbine. Turbine rotates through the force of flowing water on it 
to operate the generators. While the generators creates electricity. Lastly, the transmission line conducts the electricity towards the consumer. The next type of hydropower facility is the diversion. It is called runoff river. This facility channels a portion of a river through a canal or penstock. It may not require the use of a dam. Last is the pump storage. It stores energy by pumping water uphill to a reservoir at a higher elevation from a second reservoir at a lower elevation. When the electricity demand is low, a pump storage facility stores energy by pumping water from lower reservoir to upper reservoir. During the period of high electrical demand, the water is released back to the lower reservoir and turns a turbine, generating electricity. How much electricity a hydropower plant can create? It depends on two factors. Number one, how far the water will fall. The farther the water will fall, the more power it has. Generally, the distance that the water will fall depends on the size of the dam. The higher the dam, the farther the water will fall and the more power it has. Scientists would say that power of falling water is directly proportional to the distance it falls. In other words, water falling twice as far has twice as much energy. Number two, amount of water falling. More water falling through the turbine will produce more power. The amount of water available depends on the amount of water flowing down the river. Bigger rivers have more flowing water and can produce more energy. Power is also directly proportional to the river flow. A river with twice the amount of flowing water as another river can produce twice as much energy. This kind of energy source has its pros and cons. For pros, it's good for the environment because it does not require any fossil fuels and does not produce any harmful emission. It also provides a steady supply of clean energy. It produces 19% of electricity. It expands irrigation. It provides drinking water. It supplies hydroelectric energy. It is easier for third world countries to generate power. And it is cheaper. For cons, it destabilizes marine ecosystem. Dam building is very costly. People living near water sources need to be relocated. Some dams have to be turned down. It is restricted to areas with flowing water. Pollution affects the hydropower production. And last, there are droughts. The low water levels can heavily impact energy production and is a disadvantage to hydroelectric energy. Let's proceed to water resources. According to research, only 3% of Earth's total water volume is fresh water, while the remaining 97% are saline or salt water. Concentrating only on fresh water, almost 68.7% of it is frozen, like the glaciers and ice caps. 30.1% is groundwater, and the remaining 0.1% is fresh surface water. From there, 87% are lakes, 11% are swamps, and the rest of the 2% are rivers and other fresh surface water sources. As our final activity for today's discussion, let us look for the different water reservoir on this word pool. I'm giving you at least 1 minute or 60 seconds to look for them. Ready? Go!
Let us now check your answer. We have runoff, fresh water, aquifer, geyser, ponds, ocean, and river. Did you get all the correct answers? Excellent! You have a very sharp eyesight. To close the discussion, you get your learning module and answer page 34 and 36. I hope you have learned something from our today's discussion, Valenzuelana learners. Always remember, water and energy are closely linked. In order to maximize its use, it's our responsibility to learn more how to conserve limited water supply wisely and to care for it properly. Thank you for listening and goodbye class!